Okay, welcome back everyone. And uh, today's lesson's kind of short. Um, it's just more to communicate a, an idea that we can use for the next lesson. Um, but just looking at this picture here, just as an intro to it. Suppose the boy were to ask a friend to jump on with him on this teeter-totter here, or the seesaw here. What would happen? I'm sure you guys know the answer, but that's just kind of get our minds in the in the right space here. Okay, so let's first talk about what a balance scale is and what it is used for. We don't really use these anymore, um, but back in the day we used to use these to determine whether two things were equal um, in weight. And so they would put something on this one, maybe some gold, and they had a gold standard and want to make sure that the coins you were using actually were the right weight because you might cheat. Um, they would find out if they balanced out. I'm sure you've seen these before in math at some point. Um, we're going to kind of use this as an idea um, with, e with expressions today. So um, I have some scales here. I'll just, I'm going to show you one after the other. And I just kind of did some simple lines to show scales. And when you do this in your notebooks, it's probably easiest to just do something like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just establish that this is equal because they're balanced. You can see they're the same height. So let's just double check here. I have 36 divided by 6, and we know that is 6. And 15 minus 9 is 6. Well, that's the same number. Oh, so they're equal. So we can use two different operations or two different expressions here to show that this is equal. So that kind of works. And let's go to the next one. We have 12 plus 5. 5 plus 12. Well, 12 plus 5 is 17, and 5 plus 12 is 17. So these these two expressions are equal. Okay, let's move on here. Let's do one more here. So we have 3 times 7 and 7 times 3. Are they equal? 3 times 7 is 21, but 7 times 3 is 21. Those two expressions are equal. And you might be noticing a pattern here, uh, especially in the last two examples. So let's just talk about that. So when we add two numbers, their order does not affect the sum. The scale is always balanced. And we call this the commutative property of addition. So for example, 5 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 5. 152 plus 26 equals 26 plus 152. Uh, 144 plus 4 equals 4 plus 144. It does not matter what two numbers you use to add. Um, it doesn't matter what order they're going in. It's just they're going to equal the same. And so if we were to use variables to show this property using letters, we can see below A plus B is the same as B plus A. And we saw also that multiplication is also commutative. And when we multiply two numbers, this order does not affect the product. When I say product, that's the answer when you multiply. So for example, five plus, sorry, five times six equals six times five. 1,400 times four equals four times 1,400. And again, we can use variables to show this property for any pair of numbers we multiply. So A times B equals B times A. Or if you remember from before, we just write AB equals BA because that that uh, time sign does look like an X. Uh, all right, so how about you try? Um, take a minute here. I want you to tell me, are these scales indeed balanced and how do you know? I'll let you pause that for a sec. All right, so let's, let's double check here. So are these balanced? Two times two is four and 12 minus eight is four. Those equal this is a balanced scale. All right, 56 divided by eight is seven. Seven times two is 14. Do those balance? No, they do not balance. And by the way, that's the sign for it does not equal. Whoa, here's a problem here. Oh, I'm gonna do some bed miss. 72 divided by 12 is six plus four is 10. Five times two is 10. That indeed balances. Okay, so we've double checked those. Um, now I want you to try this. I want you to rewrite each expression using a commutative property. So I know that's a really big word, big term, um, and you're gonna kick yourself after I say it. You might wanna go back and say, what is a commutative property again? Well, here we go. 
An ex another expression for a commutative property for 5 times 8 is 8 times 5. We have 54 plus 24, 65 times 25, 7 plus 14, and 4 minus 15. Does that one work? Now, we've been working with the commutative property of addition and, and, and multiplication, and you can see that we're just rewriting it in the opposite order for all of these, but I'm just, I put that last example in there to prove that it does not work. 15 minus 4 does not equal 4 minus 15. Well, 15 minus 4 is 11. Does that equal negative 9? and that does not. So unfortunately, the commutative property for addition and multiplication will work. It does not work with subtraction. You could probably guess it will not work with division as well. Well, that's really it. Um, it's just a short lesson to set us up for the next lesson. So it's a little hard to see how this works in everyday life, but um, balance scales, people used. Where's my slide? People use this in everyday life, so I guess I'm kind of proving that in life, math happens. All right, take care, guys. My world.